Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of At The Pump. Patrick sitting here with my buddy Brian. We're live throwing another episode out to you guys <laughs> for enthusiasts, by enthusiasts. Yeah, absolutely. No, we're having a lot of fun doing this. Um, first off, I wanted to thank you guys. So we put out a poll on our social media on Instagram and Facebook and um, and Twitter too. Uh, kind of wanted to get some some ideas from you guys. So we, we put out a poll saying, hey, give us some ideas, some debates. Uh, maybe talk about this. Maybe compare these cars, these brands. Topics. Topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So we got a ton of replies back. I just want to run through a couple of these. But... There's some really good ideas. I mean, we're, we got things like, you know, maybe talk about Ford versus Ferrari. Maybe talk about Lamborghini versus Ferrari or just some other brands. Brand battles going, or like manufacturer stuff. Yeah, yeah going like okay. head to head or something like that. Nice. Um, you know, got some other ones going. Uh, talk about which brands have the best lineup front to back. That would be interesting. That would that's, be really that's cool. Tough to do. Like if you were to pick Mercedes, Honda, Fiat, right through and through every car you're driving and you can only drive that manufactured type of car. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So that we'll have to look at. That'll be a fun topic. Um, oval versus bow tie, a little Chevy versus Ford, Chevy Ford. So a lot of companies to go back to back. We got a ton of people talking about STI to Evo. That's a classic JDM, uh, you know, it's versus a battle. battle that I think has to be hashed out on this channel. We yeah. gotta, we gotta talk about that. That's For a sure. must. Um, one of the best ones was uh, best car to shagging, and we won't <laughs> to, sh- <laughs> to shagging. Yeah, uh, we won't uh, we won't spend too much time on that. But no pun intended. I'm gonna go Dodge Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> Give me yours, Brian, real I, quick. You I got gotta two say, seconds. old hippie, ten window V Dub bus. All right. All right, cool. No, I mean, that, uh, it'd be a lot of fun. So we got some really good comments, and that was uh, something that we're going to continue to do because it's fun to hear from you guys to see maybe what you want us to talk about and why, you know, maybe Brian and I don't know the, everything about those subjects, but we'll certainly do what we can, and yeah. I think it'd be a fun little learning process. Yeah, lend some comments or some insight in areas that we might not be super knowledgeable on, but I'm pretty sure our uh, our broad scope of automotive knowledge can can cover that area. Absolutely. Um So what we're going to talk about today, we posted this a couple days ago. I think it's going to be a fun topic to talk about. It's, uh, it's, I wouldn't say controversial, but it's maybe more personal preference. Yeah. There's pluses and minus pros and cons to both. Yeah. So I think, uh, we're going to do a little bit of automatic transmission versus manual transmission. Yeah. I think that's going to be a fun little topic for us to talk about. So we posted a photo, uh, of a automatic car, a manual car. Side by side, we asked you guys to give us some comments and some feedback. So let me run through a couple of these real quick. Um, There's a really strong stance for each side in this type of argument or debate. So there's valid points for the manual. There's valid points for the automatic and kind of a preference thing but sure. d- dive into it it's yeah i mean we have we have a lot of people going you know hashtag save the manuals you know no question that's an enthusiast style car right definitely um you know people are going i have a manual gearbox guy but i know enough to know that i can't shift faster than a computer manual is for the fun factor though absolutely that's true no no question um i love manuals but with the speed and consistency modern automatic car shift there's really no argument uh Fact. yeah it, for sure Manual all day, no need for practicality for me. Smiley face, I love that. Um, you know, we all know that automatics are built for speed, but I'm not. <laughs> Manuals uh, all day if possible. So it, there's a little bit on both sides. Manual for life, you know, um, all sorts of stuff. So let's let's dive into it a little bit because I, I think there's an answer for both sides of the equation here, mm-hmm. and there's pros and cons. So let's dive into it a little bit and kind of start with. Let's start with just the pros of, of manual transmission, and, and we'll do the same on the automatic side as well. So go ahead, Brian. Give me kind of your thoughts. I mean, I personally, my Subaru is a manual gearbox. It's only built in a manual gearbox, and I think that there's a much more of a connected feeling you have with the vehicle that you're driving, as well as a connection you feel with the road or like what's going on. If it's dirt, gravel, or like a track you're going to feel those sensations and it's much more of like an emotional connection as well. You're revving the engine up. You're in total control of when you shift, right? Pushing in the clutch, sliding the gear. So it gives you, I think more of a like in-depth, passionate connection to the car or automobile that you're driving. It's an emotional experience. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's something that has been around forever. Um, it's something that, 
isn't near as common now as it was back when you and I were younger. And, you know, we've yeah. seen manuals kind of take a, a dive from a production car standpoint. All these companies, there's really only a handful that are still making manual cars. So, Correct. And, and rightfully so. But, you know, you're absolutely right. The manual is something that is such an emotional experience. It's something that you're in full control of the car. Mm -hmm. You're you're feeling all the inputs of of when you're shifting and, and just the overall experience of, of your driving. Mm -hmm. A manual car gives you so much of that. Yeah. So it's something that I personally love. You know, is manual better than automatic? I don't know if it's better. It depends on, is it more of a scenario for you that a manual transmission makes more sense? It right. is an automatic car make more sense and we'll dive into that in a little bit but yeah yeah absolutely i mean i i think i'm always going to be and i think all the true enthusiasts are going to be die hard manual fans so i'm not going to say that because you don't like manual doesn't mean you're not you're not a automotive enthusiast that's not true right. um but every car guy down at heart loves a manual transmission i think it's just something literally about having all four of your limbs left foot for the clutch right foot for the gas and brake left hand in America or the United States is at least holding onto the wheel right. and your right hand is shifting the gears. So you're literally connected with all of your body parts to that vehicle. Yes. Where an automatic, it's like your left foot's just hanging out there on the dead pedal. You could drive it one handed if you want to, you know, more of like a comfort type thing. Right. So if we look at manuals, um, to circle back a little bit, they have really not changed at all i mean they added the six speed whenever that came right. around and i would say some of the newer than that yeah some of the newer stuff now is you know the, some advancement in manual technology is you know auto rev matching when mm -hmm. you're downshifting down from shifts, fifth to fourth yeah. it, it rev matches for you instead of having to heel toe or blip the throttle to match the rev of the gear that you're shifting into so that was a the really, in my mind, the only change that happened to manual transmissions. Right. Um, and, and that's maybe a good lead into the next, you know, let's talk about autos and, and some of the pros there. You know, the the way that technology has changed, you know, we look at automatic or uh, manual transmissions have maybe made some small changes through the years. It's, yeah, slight. That That's it. Automatic transmissions have made leaps and leaps bounds. And bounds. Yeah. We started with just a regular automatic transmission. You just put the car in D. And that's all you worry about. Exactly. Keep your eyes on the road and do the gas brake and steering wheel. Then they moved into a little Tiptronic stuff. Which was like a shifter type thing right. to give you the sensation or the idea that you were in control and could shift. It was like a blend. But a lot of cars back then, I distinctly remember this, a lot of times the computer or the ECU would literally deny you of a downshift. You're, you're right. If you're you know too high in the RPMs or what have you, it wouldn't let you do certain inputs. And it feels so. like you're not in con as much in control of the car, and you're not, you know. And in the day when it first came out with the Tiptronic type stuff, it was super delayed. It was. It was like a 1-1000, boom, okay, there's the gear. Right. So. And, and it's interesting because, you know, Tiptronic was, you put it in drive, you click it over to the little plus and minus Sport area, area and, yeah. and, and do it for a little bit. But I can tell you, I mean, even, I, I never did that. I mean, that was something that just wasn't interesting to me. Right. Then fast forward to now, now we have paddle shifters. Now paddle shifters came out a while ago, you know, as its first iteration for taking the gear indicators up onto the steering wheel. Right. So that has been refined considerably into today's market. So we look at where it started with auto, where it is now is a huge jump from where manuals have just kind of stayed flatlined yeah and just the number of gears they're able to put into some of these modern transmissions right. now is absurd there's trucks and luxury cars and sedans with 10 speed automatic right. transmissions i mean they're so so they're not only quick they're efficient right i mean fuel economy yeah in most cases you might be in third fourth gear before you even get across the intersection from a mm -hmm. red light so and you might not even feel that so they're super efficient right yeah so that is no question the movement that companies are doing that's that is the future and maybe you can shed some light I, I think there is one car that you and i discussed a little bit that really i think was the pinnacle at that time that automotive manufacturers kind of went okay this is this is the direction that things are yeah. going yeah i mean i think most of the followers would agree with this as well 2008 nissan gtr or the r35 kind of chassis was the first like automatic 
car that put down numbers of that caliber and made you question like, okay, they don't make this in a manual. It's still somewhat of an enthusiast car, track purposed or focused driving type of vehicle. Right. And like we're saying, a benefit to the automatic is the stats on paper. You can't question any of that. No. Like no one is shifting that fast. And we had discussed earlier, like with the power levels that some of these cars are coming from the factory with, you don't necessarily want to take your hand off the wheel right. to shift. You'd rather Very have both hands on a little flick of the finger to upshift or downshift with a paddle. Makes more sense logically to someone who's ripping something six, seven, eight hundred horsepower. Right. I mean, so. if, if we look at some of the manufacturers now, I mean, we have Porsche PDK transmission. Mm -hmm. arguably the fastest and best transmission to date yeah. in the autom in the automatic realm right mm -hmm. um you have bmw with their dual clutch systems um you have you know lamborghini doing that as well you got ferrari with their f1 transmissions mm -hmm. uh aston martin using their zf transmission so all of these even though they are different they are all achieving the same thing they're incredibly quick there's nothing that anyone i don't care who you are if you're vin diesel Whoever it is, you're not shifting near as fast as yeah. the slight pull of a paddle. It's so engaging. It's so quick, and it's it is the future. So I could I I, I understand why manufacturers are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, would the manual transmission be as fun? Yes. If you're looking for, I want to see how quick my car is zero to sixty. I want to have all the quickest shifts manual car might not do that for you. It won't be the car for you. Right. Right. It has to be the paddle shifters are just so incredible. So if we look at the, that leads us into like the cons of a manual transmission, which uh, speed of shifting is one. Right. Efficiency is two. Right. Um, you just, you're not going to get the car moving as quick as you can right or wrong. But if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for strictly performance, strictly how quick a car can shift mm -hmm. and move automatic transmission is it for you. Yeah, I agree. Another thing too is the efficiency of like driver input. I would maybe you could talk about this. I haven't personally been out on track days or done like hot laps, but I would imagine you're mentally and physically drained from trying to calculate when you're shifting, when you're doing all these things with a manual gearbox when with an automatic it's a lot less effort, a lot less mental power. Right. To kind of plot those things throughout the course that you're driving through what's a unique point so. too is that these transmissions with paddle shifters have come so far to the fact that um let, let's assume you're in fifth gear and you're running down the back straight and you got a really sharp turn coming up that you might need to be in second gear for mm -hmm. so what's so unique about these cars and what i love about the automatic portion of it is if i take and hold the downshift paddle just hold it just a little bit the car will jump as i'm braking from fifth to second, fifth to first, fifth to third, whatever is needed for that corner based on your speed and, and your RPMs and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's so unique because you'll come bombing into a corner, slam on the brakes, pull and hold left paddle, go from fifth to second in a heartbeat and off you go. You know, main no transmissions, you're, you're, you're planning for that, you're heel towing, you're, you're breaking in yeah. and rev matching, you're doing whatever you can to get the car settled and turned in before you get back on the gas so but some might argue that because you're pulling off these more complicated maneuvers with a manual it's more satisfying or gratifying as you exit the apex absolutely. and you're smashing on the gas and you've pulled that off that and that's where corner. i'm 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 50 50 yeah. on that point because it's yeah. fun to have a manual car on track it's a lot of fun to have a a, a really kick-ass paddle shift car on a racetrack as well right so they're just different applications right you know it the unique part i think for me is I do lose some of that emotional connection and just overall um, experience when I'm in a paddle shift car. Yeah. Are they fun? Yes. Are they insanely quick? Yes. But for what I may be looking out of at you know out of a car is something that's going to be engaging, and and it's a trait that it's funny. I highly think that not a lot of people in today's world will learn or know how to drive a manual car like we did growing up. That's true. They yeah. don't have to. They don't have to. There was probably half the Civics or Corollas or Altima. Like most of the cars that we were around in our teens, half of them were automatic and half of them were manual, mainly because manuals were cheaper. Yeah. I mean, or they were just more produced back then. I don't know. 
but now it's like the millennial anti-theft device, right? Oh, there's three pedals <laughs> right. and this shifty thing. What's right. going what on Right, what do we here? do with this thing? Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So it, I don't think this topic is as much of a debate as it is figuring out what do you like. Now, different cars might lend itself to different transmissions. So yeah. if we talk about a, a Mark IV Supra, which again, automatic versus you know, manual. Yeah. 10 times out of 10, we're taking the manual car, but Correct. it's, it's all relative, right? If you're in a brand new 488 where they don't make a manual transmission, but nonetheless, it's a new Ferrari. It's incredibly efficient with its F1 technology. Yeah. You know, it's just, I think it's more, less debate, more subjective. Right. The auto side is faster shift times, statistically a little quicker. Yeah. Manual is you're still saving the soul experience of driving that car, and there's a little bit more technical skill level required to pull off that type of driving style, sure. which could be more rewarding in the end. And I think that's partly maybe why myself and I think you as well, we're attracted to cars that are a little bit older, cars that maybe when you and I were growing up were cars that were unobtainable for us mm -hmm. based on because that's when they just came out and, and it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So we look at some of these older cars, it, all they make is a manual transmission. And that's, that's true. That's all we're looking for. And I'm completely fine with that. That's true. So, um, here's a question for you, Brad, I'm going to put you on the spot. So if, if you had to choose an automatic car, what would be the best automatic car for you in, in your, in your mindset? The best automatic car for me. See, I would probably go and grab like a M3 automatic or M4 automatic yep. or something like that. Yep. Yeah. Some type of BMW dual clutch transmission. Comfy, still still fast and all of that. From personal experience, it's a great car. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So, okay. So we got that. We got an M3, M4. Ultimate dream car setup, manual transmission. Go. I'd have to go with the R34 yeah. Nissan. Yeah, absolutely. Just go to a throwback classic like Godzilla, if you will, like a Paul Walker type. Yeah. I mean, for those that don't know what an R34 is, that's a Nissan Skyline GTR that we never got here in the States. And they're approaching their uh, 25 year import laws. So we'll start seeing those cars here soon and we can only imagine that'll be definitely a different topic, but just the price of what that's going to be because that yeah. car is so sought after after yeah. automotive enthusiasts so well there's a whole generation of people like us that were kind of the fast and the furious product and i mean that's the pinnacle halo type car from japan yeah that and the mark IV supra so it's like either of those manual that that's it i'm 100 percent with you that's the top of the line for me what would you say as far as like a in a daily kind of commuting type automatic car. Ooh, that's 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 tough. I mean, really anything that you're looking at, I I'll speak on behalf of what I have now. I think any of the new Audis or, you know, I have a SQ5 and that transmission's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, I from a, a daily point of view, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, if if I was to go, okay, Pat, best automotive or, you know, best automatic car. Um there's only really one car that comes to mind for me and that's the GT3 RS. So PDK all the way, that car I think would be absolutely incredible to have. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. not just for what it is, but the the way that that transmission behaves. And now they use that transmission in majority of their cars, mm -hmm. but I think PDK is very difficult to beat from a driver's perspective. Yeah, well, and they have all the track history and the you know racing heritage to yeah, back that up too. For sure. So. Um, best manual car, God, there, there's two that come to mind, and I just I. I these are sought after cars for me, but gated manual Audi R8. That is a classic the V8, V10, V10 or, either yeah. or, um, God, I mean a, a beautiful gated shifter that just clicks every time you put it into gear and it's all like titanium or stainless steel. Yeah. Or I mean, something it's, that's... it's just the, the sensations you get driving that car yeah. and I have a good buddy that has one and I just, I can only imagine from a true enthusiast perspective, that is an awesome car. The other one that came in the back of my head is it came in GT4. Um, you know, Porsche not only makes great automatic transmissions, their mangoes are also incredible too. Right. So those two from a driver's car, um, I, I, I don't think you can find a better manual transmission 
speaking on behalf of what I would personally want to have. Yeah. You know. Right. And at the end of the day, it's all personal preference too. It, it is. So some people might want to have like a, you know, a drag type setup that's still manual. Right. You know, who knows? But I, I just think it's, it's crazy that all of the modern American cars that are super, super fast, say the new C8, a Hellcat or a Demon, you know, Challengers, all that is now automatic. Right. They don't even make them in manuals. Sure. So no, you're absolutely right. But let's, you know, we appreciate you guys commenting and giving your inputs into this topic because it, we could sit here and debate this all day long, but you can't fault either of them. They both have their place in the market. Right. Um, I'm really hoping that manufacturers still continue to do manual transmissions. And, you know, obviously a lot of your your lower end priced uh, sport cars, you know, your WRXs, your uh, FRSs, all, you know, th- Nissan Zs, all that stuff are still offered in manual transmission. Mm-hmm. On the exotic side, you know, there's only really a couple. You know, we start looking at Aston Martin just came out with, with a, like seven a seven speed. speed yeah. yeah. So what's unique is that first gear is in second gear where, where it normally would be in second. Mm-hmm. That's first. So it's a seven speed manual. It's awesome. But what we're seeing, I think the trend is, is that the main production of the cars are automatic cars. No question. Yeah. The limited production, the one offs that they do, the limited, you know, hey, we're making 100, we're making 200 are more for the enthusiast, right? True. Porsche does that as well. You know, they have their enthusiast style cars, their 911T, uh, their Carrera T, and then um, I think a GT3 Touring, stuff like that that they offer. But is it the mass-produced car? No. No, absolutely it is, not. It's nice they're still making it, which I just hope manufacturers continue to do that. BMW yeah. still offers it as a no-charge option on their M cars, the M3, M4. Nice. So you pay, I think it's 2700 bucks to jump up to the DCT. So... I'm, I'm hoping that's the trend. I'm hoping that we can see that they're still going to make these cars, but we'll see. But let's let's just look forward to see what happens. Yeah, they're going to make them as long as there's a demand for them. Right. So all of the save the manuals, keep the third pedal there. I'm, I'm for and standing behind that. 100%. <laughs> yeah. 100%. But appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, for YouTube, listen, uh, you know, we love for you guys to like, comment, subscribe. This is, uh, we do two platforms. We do it on YouTube and do a video format of that as well. And then we're also available all, on all your podcast hostings. So we're we're out there if you want to listen, multiple ways for you to do that. And we just wanted to thank you guys for uh, tuning in and um, kind of touching on the subject. So we got some more really good content to come. And Hell yeah. We'll yeah, see you next time at the yeah. pump. We'll see you guys.